Welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. This edition we're going to be looking at the Power Arc 140ST. 140ST is a stick TIG unit with 120, 240 volt input capability. Now, operating on 120 volts, you can expect 100 amps at 35% duty cycle. The 140ST is compact enough to go anywhere. It comes with its own carrying case and it's easily stored behind the seat of a truck, uh, in the trunk of a car, or about anywhere you need to carry it. Now, as you can see, compact carrying case, quite slim, slender and it's not much bigger than a, uh, a small briefcase or a, or a laptop computer. Compared to the Power Arc 200, which is on the other side, it's quite small. We're going to open up the case now and show you what's inside. Now this will give you a size perspective. The case is approximately 16 inches long. 16 inches high and from the end about five and a half inches wide. We've already looked at the size of the case, now we're going to open it up and show you what's inside. When you get your unit, you're going to open up the case, you're going to find this laying on its side, you're going to find a box here. Both will be encased in plastic typically but we've already removed the plastic so that you can see the unit more clearly. Now when you get it, you're going to open it up and you're going to take it out and you're going to find the strap already attached at the top and the cable. One of the first items you'll come to once you open the accessories box is the work clamp. The 140ST uses 25 millimeter DENS connectors. Some people call this a 3 8 DENS. Now if you'll notice, the work clamp is fairly small, but it will accommodate the 140 amps. The dense connectors that we were just referring to have a 3 8 pin diameter approximately. Now this is a common item found on other national brand welders. One of the next accessories you'll discover is the electrode holder. Now the electrode holder is already attached, as you can see, to the uh, electrode cable and to the dense connector. Again, it's a 25 millimeter DENS connector or a standard 3 8 diameter pin. Okay, we've slid the cover back, which is, takes a little slight effort, but uh, if you need to, you can lightly clamp the end in a vise without uh, marring the surface and pull your rubber cover back, and it'll reveal a simple Allen set screw, and you release the Allen screw and you pull your cable out. If you want a longer cable or a larger cable, you can easily slide it up to about a, a, a two gauge cable into the end of that. TIG torch. This is a 17 series with a gas valve for manual control of the gas. The 140ST does not have a built in solenoid. This means that you have to control the gas manually by opening the valve or closing the valve before and after you start your weld. It also has a dummy switch right here which is not connected to anything but this body serves for several different of our series torches and this switch is inactive and actually it's blocked from moving at all. Again, has the DENS connector. Now, for your gas connection you have a blank or a stub end right here. That means you're going to have to connect it to a gas regulator yourself. Now it's quite easily done and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now one item you're going to need to buy, uh, you can either purchase it from Everlast or uh, source it from your local welding supply store, is a regulator. Now you can get the ball type which we have here or you can get the uh, double gauge type which shows your flow. 
Now, to connect it, I've already removed the fitting that came with this Smith regulator. Now, some people may not like that, but there's a, what, other ways to adapt this, and you can adapt the procedure I'm going to show you to uh, fit your fitting quite easily with a, just about any kind of uh, argon connections that you can get from someplace like Western or someplace like that. Now, you, I have a quarter inch double bar fitting uh, designed for splicing uh, quarter inch tubing together. Now this is actually 5 sixteenths, but this tubing is flexible enough to slide right up on the quarter inch. Now as you slide it, you may have to warm it up temporarily or something like that. You don't want to overheat it, you don't want to melt it, but to get it up there you don't have to go all the way. You just need to get up close enough that it's going to hold and you can put a clamp on it. Now the other tubing is a little bit bigger but it's designed for the quarter inch so you can slide this up. I've used this quite a lot so it is worn on the inside. But you keep pushing your tubing up and you have a connection. Make sure you've installed hose clamps to secure the hoses on your fitting. Now these are probably going to be about 49 to 69 cents a piece depending on where you buy them. But uh, this makes a good connection and it'll last. A couple of bonus items included in the accessory package. You have your TIG torch consumables which includes uh, three collets, one collet body which will accept all three collets a short back cap, a long back cap, and three cups with a four, five, and six size. You also have a small wire brush. Now this is a, a very good starter brush. You may want to get a bigger one, better one uh, after you get some experience. But it has a small chipping hammer on one side and then of course the brush on the other. Now the 140, just as our other welders, uses a standard wire configuration for a welder, which is black, white, and green. Black is hot, white is hot, green is ground. There is no neutral in a 240 wiring system for a welder. This is a NEMA 650 plug. This plug happens to be a Cooper. Now, this is the one that I use around here and uh, it's quite easy to understand because it has a black, green, and a white markings here so that you know where to put your wires. I would suggest getting a good quality three-prong 240 plug if you're going to put, use it on 240 because the cheap ones will come apart quite quickly. Notice that I have a standard 120 volt plug here and we have a black, white, and green situation once again. Now, the black will be your hot, your white will be your common, and your green will be your ground. Be sure to observe wire polarity when you're hooking up the unit for 120 operation. Green will be your ground, silver color screw is typically going to be your neutral, and gold color screw will be your black or your hot wire. Now, you need to verify this inside your connection at your wall terminal. Sometimes uh, over the years, uh, you'll find that uh, in older installations your wire colors may not always be the same. 